Hi, my name is Anthony Cummins and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about Sekiguchi Ryu. Sekiguchi Ryu is an old Japanese sword school from samurai times. Now, what I want to do today is tell you that the sword school still exists, but it's been fractured into many lineages. Now, uh, and, and the teachings have been fractured as well into different sections. So, for example, in Wakayama, there is still a section that deals with hand to hand combat. Um, there's also a, a man called Yamada Sensei, Mr. Yamada, and he deals with the sword drawing techniques. So, he is the inheritor of the sword drawing techniques. Now I, of course, have talked to Mr. Yaman quite a bit actually and I've met him and we've discussed a relationship between our two ideas and, and he is, like me, trying to push forward the, uh, the idea of getting the samurai skills back, back to what they were. So what he'd like to do is bring Sekiguchi Ryu back together as the most complete school he can. So a very, very quick origin story of Sekiguchi Ryu. Now, um, we have to put this down to a little bit of folklore and a little bit of legend, but that doesn't mean it's not true. It just means it's not quite substantiated yet. But the general basics of the school starts like this. is There's a man from a family called Sekiguchi, and he's the samurai Sekiguchi. And he is absolutely born maybe at the end of the Sengoku period or around then. He is absolutely amazing at uh, warfare and killing and samurai swordsmanship and all these types of things. He's actually very good at it and he accumulates a lots of things. Now, um, at this time in around the 1640s, there is a, a lord called Tokugawa Yorinobu who's in Kishu in Wakayama and he's get, attracting to him all the best warriors, all the best swordsmen and this Sekiguchi samurai hears about it, so he goes to his lord and he says, you know, lord, I want to leave your service and move on to other service of other people. This is perfectly okay in samurai times. Uh, but the samurai says, no, you know, you because, but they need the, uh, the approval of their lord. And his lord says, no, you know, probably because he's an amazing samurai. So he's like, no, you can't do it. So according to the story is the Seki Sa samurai Sekiguchi, he actually just goes anyway. He says, no, I'm going. So the lord sends some warriors after him to bring him back and or cut him down or whatever they need to do. But when they get there, they can't face him. They just, I, think, I don't even think a fight happens. They just, he's too much for them. So they like back away and say sorry. And he goes off. Now what we do know is the fact is that he did actually leave his lord. And he went down to Wakayama in Kishu. And he actually served uh, the Tokugawa Kishu clan there. Or the Tokugawa clan. And he became what's known as a paid guest. That means he was status as samurai became a bit dodgy because he'd left his lord and he was, you know, very much cast out then, but he then became retained, not as a samurai, as a guest in the castle. And he then taught Sekiguchi Ryu to the people of Wakayama. Now, most people think of Sekiguchi Ryu as just as sword drawing uh, or just as the fighting. It was much more comprehensive. And Yamada Sensei has been on the trek to try and find as many of the documents as he can. And one of his predecessors actually found um, a document which is Goku Hiden, which is almost like deepest secrets or the Hiden, the secrets of the school. Now there's many more documents to find, but in this one he allowed us for my new book uh, to actually translate and bring it out. The book I'm bringing out is called Samurai and the Ninja. And this book, uh, you can order it now, you can get it now, or at least pre-order it, and it'll be out in June uh, 2015. So get your orders in and it'll just arrive. And in there, he's given us a section of the scroll, which me and Yoshi have translated, and we've got it in there. Now, before I move on any further, I want to say that Yamada absolutely, right, so the instructor Yamada, the lineage holder of the sword school section, he does not under any circumstances claim Sekiguchi Ryu is a ninja school. He does not. There is no claim. He does, however, understand that some of the Goku Hiden, the secrets, the deep secrets, are definitely shinobi orientated. So what we did is we took some of the shinobi-esque sections 
and we put them in the new book. So uh, if you want to read them, they're in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it here, uh, just just the outline. Now remember that uh, a lot of the times, what is ninjutsu and what is not ninjutsu is down to intention. And when you read these, those people who've been following me and those people who know my books will just be like, ping, 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 ninja, 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 shinobi. So what I'll do now is I'll read you what we've translated, the sections. So, in the deep secrets of Sekiguchirihu, you get Shinobi Taimatsu, the ninja torch, yeah, for moving around in, when you're infiltrating. You get eggs that are filled with poison gas, so when you light them and throw them in against the enemy, the enemy are poisoned. You then get blinding powders, which you do find in a lot of other situations, but definitely you find it within Shinobi. You get how to detect poison in your drinks, how, how to know when your drink's been poisoned. Um, also, poison musket shots for criminal capture. When you're capturing someone, which is without doubt in the Edo period of Shinobi's job, um, they, you shoot sort of chemicals at them from a musket and it makes them sick, vomit, keel over. Um, which, of course, you know, it is in here. Now, breathing skills for running. Unfortunately, we only have half the teaching. The other half, it says, is kudem. Uh, this one, which I'm so sorry guys, we don't have the teaching, we only have the title and it says Kuden, but it's still in there and it's walking at night, the methods of walking through the night. Let's hope we find it in another manual. Now of course, we, this goes on, these are full explanations of the waterproof torch, the waterproof fuse, which without doubt is used outside of Shinobi, but is definitely part of Shinobi as well. Then this one is 100% Shinobi, which is sleeping powders. I have never seen sleeping powders anywhere but with Shinobi. Uh, and that, that rounds up pretty much the, the secret teachings inside of the Sekiguchi. Now, please understand, inside that, we've translated the actual teaching. You get the, the recipes, the, the different stuff, uh, how to do it, you know, the techniques. Apart from the two I said, which uh, just say Kuden, or, you know, half of it's in Kuden. So, while Sekiguchi Ryu is not a ninja school, it definitely has elements of ninjutsu in it. Now, uh, for example, Mubyoshi Ryu, which we're working with as well, that also has elements of ninjutsu in What this means is they are not ninja, they are not hired as shinobi, but people learning Sekiguchi Ryu may have to do acts of vengeance, they may have to go and kill their enemies, you def or they may have to defend themselves against something that's targeting them. This is definitely shinobi-esque, you know, this is how they, they take in the little bits of the shinobi. So it's more of peacetime shinobi as apart from wartime shinobi. But if the connection to shinobi was only that, what about this? In the Bansen Shukai written in 1676 by uh, Fujibayashi, it actually tells you about Sekiguchi Ryu, but most people don't realise this because the name is different. Sekiguchi Ryu can be called Sekiguchi Ryu, or it can be called Shinshin Sekiguchi Ryu, or even Shinshin Ryu. Now, in the Bansen Shukai, it says they have a, I think it's a waterproof torch, and he says, oh, I have got this from Sekiguchi, sorry, I've got this from Shinshin Ryu, which means he got it from Sekiguchi Ryu. So that means even in the Bansen Shukai, when he's going round collecting all the Iga and Koga people, someone there was studying Sekiguchi Ryu, and someone said, well, we have this torch, which he classed as a fire element or a ninja, you know, shinobi, kajutsu, the element of using fire within ninjutsu. He absolutely took it as that, and it ended up in the Bansen Shukai. Now, Yamada Sensei, uh, when I last spoke to him, wants to collect as many of the Sekiguchi scrolls together and try to bring out, and possibly in the future, not soon, but quite far in the future, I think he would like to do a book about Sekiguchi or bring Sekiguchi back to a whole. Uh, which is a great idea. So if anybody can find any Sekiguchi Ryu or Shinshin Ryu or Shinshin Sekiguchi Ryu scrolls, please contact Yamada uh, Sensei directly. I am going to leave you the link to the Facebook site, his Facebook site down below. So you can go there, just click the link, click like, and you'll keep up to date with Yamada all the way through. Not a problem. But I want to add something here. So apart from Sekiguchi Ryu and apart from it being amazing, You've got to, I've said a few key words here that some people will be like that, like, really? Carry on, Anthony. So I will carry on if you clocked them. Right, basically, um, in the 1640s, 1650s, in Wakayama, there is a young samurai who's chilling out around the area, learning to be a samurai, and probably an adolescence, maybe about 10 years old, something like that. 
and the name of that samurai is Natori Masazumi. So yeah, the Natori school, Natori Ryu, is very much developed through the people like Sekiguchi uh, being in that presence. So let me put it in context for you. The Lord, who is like the son of um, Tokugawa Iyasu, is absolutely obsessed, not in a bad way, in a good way, with warfare. And he's like, you know, we will bring the strongest warriors to us. And he gets people like Sekiguchi, he invites him, he hears about him, says, come down. And he, you know, he walks around the garden with the Lord. There's the story of how he put a knife inside the Lord's jacket on the sly to just show him, you know, the dexterity he had. But also, he had samurai like Yui Shosetsu. Now, we have to be careful here. Yui Shosetsu is not actually a samurai. He's a ronin, but even so, maybe not a full ronin, i.e. not a samurai who's been displaced. He may actually just be a commoner who gets up to a ronin status. He's known as one of the three great ronin. But Yui Shosetsu was like a phenomenal warrior. He he got between 1,000 and 5,000. They don't quite know students around Edo, but he was very close to um, Tokugawa Yorinobu. Uh, and, you know, he, uh, Tokugawa was like, bring me these good warriors, and Yui Shosetsu's there. Now, here in the castle, they're drinking their tea, and they're having sake, and they're having walks, and all these warriors are discussing warfare. Now, we know in 1654, Natori joins the Lord's household, and at that time, um, these warriors are around. Now, Yui Shosetsu is not. They've just done a coup and Yui Shosetsu has committed suicide. But as Natori's grown up in that area around the castle and the people and students of Yui Shosetsu and Sekiguchi himself, they're all there as Natori is brought up and he starts researching, of course, and he goes on to, um, to write his ninja manuals and his epic manuals that he does. So, right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go have a look at the book. Go have a look at uh, if you want to read the actual scrolls. And please click like on uh, the Sekiguchi channel and enjoy.